sacred statue on campus. It looks like the university says we're looking into the process of doing this. What's your thought? Should that statue be removed in your view? No, it should not. You know, we, we can't change history. Um, while some may not may look back on our history and, uh, and not like what they see, uh, we can't change history and, and moving that statue is, is unnecessary. Uh, it's going to take a process for it to get done and, and I think e eventually uh, what's going to happen is the State College Board is going to weigh in on it. Um, Mississippi has a very complicated history, uh, but the fact of the matter is we need to focus on our future. We need to talk about the good things that are going on in Mississippi. We need to talk about the fact uh, that we have the lowest unemployment rate in, in Mississippi right now in our history. We have more people working today than at any time in our state's history. We actually have 80,000 more people working in Mississippi today than we're working eight years ago when Governor Bryant and I were both elected uh, to our current positions and so that's what we need to focus on is what, what what's the future look like for but our there are some that say that pa this the past it represents a divisive past and it should be removed if the if the, you are going to move in the future well there's no doubt that there's a there's a, a group of 18 to 22 year old kids that are uh, working really hard to get that done and, and they're idealistic and, and I appreciate that um, but we've got to we got to focus on the future um, and, and that's something that I, I will certainly focus on. Uh, I don't think removing monuments from our historical past uh, is a, is a use, use of our time that we ought to be focused on. And I know uh, there's some talk maybe having another state referendum about the flag issue. Would you support that, let the voters decide again, or do you, would you just want to go to the old referendum? Well, I will tell you that I think the only way the flag should be changed is if the people decide to change the flag. The people voted overwhelmingly, 65 to 35 in 2001 to keep our current flag. Uh, if the people of Mississippi want to change the flag, and at some point they, want, they may want to, it ought to be done by a vote of the people. I don't support unilateral action by the governor. I don't support unilateral action by the legislature to change the flag. I think if, if it's going to be done, it ought to be done by a vote by the people. Switching gears to the uh, proposed teacher raise, uh, so this, the NEA ranks Mississippi the lowest teacher pay raise. The teacher union leaders have argued this proposal is an election year ploy. What would be your reaction with these proposals? <laughs> well, look, pay just raise? last week we raised teacher pay in Mississippi by $1,500 uh, per year. Um, that follows the $2,500 a year increase that we did in 2014 and 2015. So three of the last six years we've uh, raised teacher pay. Uh, in addition to that, teachers in Mississippi receive uh, $500 a year, a step pay increase. So what that uh, comes out to is during my tenure as Lieutenant Governor, and, and by the way, the Lieutenant Governor of Mississippi presides over the Senate and presides over the legislature. And during those eight years, if you were a teacher working in, our cl in a classroom eight years ago, um, you're going to make $8,000 more per year next year than you made just eight years ago. Um, we're making progress. Now, I want to be honest with you. No teacher in Mississippi makes what they're worth, and we've got more work to do, but we're making tremendous progress, and that's something I'm proud of, and I'm, I want to continue to work on that. The heartbeat bill that was passed a few weeks ago, um, you know, opponents have said this will be devastating for Mississippi. It furthers lack of health care, and we will waste taxpayer dollars from lengthy legal challenges. What would be your response? To that? Well, I'll tell you, uh, it has been uh, my goal and will continue to be my goal to make Mississippi the safest place in America for an unborn child. It may cost us a little bit of money to defend that in, in court, but I will tell you, I think every penny we spend trying to make Mississippi the safest place in America for an unborn child is a penny worth spending, and I, I have every intention of defending uh, that law and every other pro-life bill that we've passed in the Mississippi legislature uh, all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, if that's what's necessary. And do you believe it will be upheld? The, the legal challenges are imminent. Yeah, the, the legal challenges are imminent, I'm sure. In fact, uh, they were talking about suing us long before we even passed the bill. Um, I think they'll, uh, I think the, uh, the other side, the far left, which by the way, you've seen in states like Virginia and New York, where they believe that abortion ought to be allowable all the way up until a baby's birth. That's just wrong. It's fundamentally wrong. Life begins at conception, and, and that's the reason I believe ultimately this bill will be upheld. In your view, is this, is this going to potentially undermine Roe versus Wade? Is that the goal, to go to the Supreme Court? I mean, other states have similar bills that they've just passed as well. Yeah, well, obviously there's, there's other states that are also are trying to um, protect the lives of unborn children. I commend them uh, for doing that. Uh, I do think that ultimately uh, there is going to be a, a test case, whether it's in this particular uh, lawsuit or some other lawsuit uh, where this issue does get back before the United States Supreme Court and I think that's healthy. I think the court erred in their original decision um, and I think, um, I think that's a, a positive thing if it does get back before the court. 
you've been pretty vocal about uh, rejecting any form of Medicaid expansion in Mississippi, even though a poll earlier this year showed 60% of Mississippians support such an expansion. So um, why is, you, you say your opposition is not the best interest of taxpayers. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you, I'll never govern based upon uh, polls who allegedly claim that Mississippians are for this or for that. Um, my entire political career has been focused on one thing, and that is this. I'm always going to do what I think is right for Mississippians. And I believe strongly that expanding Obamacare in Mississippi is the wrong course of action. In fact, I'd go so far as to say if, if you believe that Obamacare is the answer, then you are asking the wrong question. We don't need more welfare in our state. We need more opportunity in our state. And so what I'm going to focus on is, is job creation, bringing better and higher paying jobs to our state. We're going to focus on uh, more employability. We need a higher uh, workforce participation rate in our state. And to get that, we're going to have to focus on workforce training, get more people trained to do the jobs of tomorrow. If we can get more people in a good job that have good health care options, we'll be in a better shape than any government program will ever allow. If so, if it's not for Medicaid expansion, what would you support to help uninsured get coverage? Well, I think uh, what we've got to do is we've got to focus on opportunity uh, for those individuals. We've got to focus on uh, getting them the skill sets that they need so that they can get a good job. There's nothing better than a good job to, to get people uh, focused on, on uh, the good things that are going on uh, in life. And so that's one of the things that we're going to do. Um, I will tell you that anybody who has... Uh, participated in the health care system uh, in Mississippi and really across America knows there's enough money in the system. Uh, just look at the bill that you get from your local hospital get, or look at the bill that you get uh, from your local doctor. Uh, there's enough money in the system. We spend almost eight billion dollars in Mississippi alone on the Medicaid program. Uh, what we need is we need more flexibility from the federal government. We need the federal government to block grant money to the states because the fact of the matter is Quality health care is different in every community. Uh, accessibility to health care and the needs of the health care community uh, is different whether you're in Oxford, it's different in Oxford than it is in South Haven. It's different in South Haven than it is in Tunica. And so states need more flexibility from the federal government. Again, we're going to spend $8 billion on our Medicaid program alone. If we had more flexibility, we could, we could create a health care system in Mississippi that met the needs of those individual communities. Uh, my last question, uh, Olive Branch are talking about here in DeSoto County, talking about de-annexing some unincorporated county land. It would expand Olive Branch by more than 50 square miles, potentially. Do you have any thoughts on, on this, or just the broader de-annexation issue? As a whole? Well, I, I don't know all the specifics about the annexation. That's obviously a local issue. Um, that's an issue between those who live in the county and, and, and the leaders of the city. Um, I, I do know uh, that DeSoto County is, is a, an area of our state that is booming economically. It's booming in large part because we have quality leadership uh, in the county. It's also booming because we have quality people uh, in that area. Um, when you look at um, unemployment rates across Mississippi, DeSoto County tends to lead the way in having one of the lowest unemployment rates in the state. When you look at quality education, uh, DeSoto County has a quality educational system, tends to lead the way uh, throughout Mississippi. And so um, I'm, I'm proud of what's going on economically. I'm proud of what's going on from an education standpoint in our state. And I don't know all the specifics about the annexation, but um, we'll certainly look into that. You're rolling out the campaign today. How do you see the primaries later this summer? How do you see this race uh, shaping out in the months ahead? Well, look, I'm, I'm so blessed um, and excited about uh, kicking off our campaign. Uh, we're going to make stops uh, over the next three days in virtually every community across Mississippi. And we're going to talk to Mississippians about Mississippians about the important issues uh, that we face. The fact is that we're making great progress in our state from an economic standpoint, from an educational outcome standpoint. We've got to build on those successes uh, and, and I look forward to doing that. We also have to stop the liberal extremists from coming into our state through their candidate Jim Hood uh, and keep their ideals and their values out of Mississippi and I'm committed to doing that and I'm the person that will stand up and make it happen.